जस्ट for the struggle of the kashmiri people for the inalienable right to self determination but also as a tribute to all those kashmiris who have lost their lives a lot of arrangements were made today there was a solidarity walk that happened uh, in the auspices of the constitution avenue then of course the permanent mission of pakistan to the oic organized a special event and a photo exhibition the foreign minister of pakistan addressed letters to the united nations uh, security council as well as the united nations general assembly the prime minister of pakistan addressed the uh, uh, ejk legislative assembly the chief of the army staff visited the troops deployed on the front lines along the line of control and uh, many other uh, uh, important events were also held uh, and statements issued whether it be from the chief of the army staff the uh, the prime minister of pakistan the president of pakistan and important uh, uh, leaders in pakistan across the world also there were a lot of protests and demonstrations that were held in different countries uh, from belgium uh, to uh, brussels to uh, uh to uh, turkey to many other countries across the world in fact to to show their solidarity with the kashmir cause with the uh, right to self determination that has been denied to the people of in illegally occupied jammu and kashmir since the year 1947 despite the number of resolutions that are still pending within the united nations this is going to be our first story a kashmir solidarity day observed today across pakistan and the world Our second story ladies and gentlemen concerns terrorism in Pakistan with respect to what the latest incident that happened in Dera Ismail Khan 10 cops martyred 6 injured in a late night attack on the Chaudhan police station in Dera Ismail Khan Khyber Pakhtunkhwa the attack comes 3 days before uh, the general elections are to be held we all know they are going to happen on uh, the uh, 8th of uh, February more than 30 terrorists uh, launched an attack from three directions there was an exchange of fire over two and a half hours this was stated by the kp police chief akhtar hayat gandapur let's begin with our first story and that concerns kashmir solidarity day before we uh, go to our guests in the studio we'd like to share with you a small report on the importance of this day The entire nation observes Kashmir Solidarity Day with a renewed commitment to support the just struggle of Kashmiris for their inalienable right to self-determination as enshrined in the United Nations Security Council resolutions. The people of Pakistan, the government of Pakistan, the government of Azad Jammu and Kashmir and Kashmiris around the world are observing the Solidarity Day to renew their dedication to the Kashmir cause and their love and affection for the people of the Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Rallies, walks and demonstrations across the country depict the unwavering support for Kashmiris who have been fighting for their freedom. Observance of this day is also aimed at highlighting the long-standing dispute of Jammu and Kashmir internationally and letting the people of occupied Kashmir know that they are not alone in this hour of trial and turmoil and Pakistani missions will organize events to achieve it. The dispute is the oldest unresolved international conflict in the world today. The dispute remains unresolved due to India's refusal to honor its commitments and its disrespect for fundamental human rights and international law. The day also attempts to awaken the sleeping conscience of the international community to a dispute which has the potential to spiral out of control due to rising tide of Hindutva terror in India and nukes. A moment of silence at 10 a.m. honors the martyrs of Kashmir and reaffirms Pakistan's unwavering support for the Kashmiri cause. It has been a battle of hope against overwhelming odds, courage against fear, and sacrifice against tyranny. But through all of it, the Kashmiri people have persisted and stood firm in the face of continuing Indian campaign of brutalization. to discuss more on this very important issue that is kashmir solidarity day something that we've been highlighting so many times every year since so many years but uh, uh, what is happening is that it uh, goes to deaf ears but we will continue to be more proactive with every passing day and with every passing occasion so that the necessary uh, you know uh, information comes to the right uh, people so that the necessary change occurs for the people of an illegally occupied jammu and kashmir we've been joined by three important guests in the studios uh, let me introduce them to you one by one it's the first time that they are all three together in my show uh, my, my first guest is sundas malik she is the chairperson 
of the United Jammu and Kashmir uh, Coalition. Thank you very much, Sundas, to have uh, joined us. Our second guest is Dr. Vakas Hari Kosa. He's a foreign affairs expert. Thank you, Vakas, to have joined us. Our third guest is Dr. Uh, Mujahid Gilani, uh, Kashmiri leader. I can see the scarf as well. You represent both the Palestinian and the Kashmiri issue through this. Thank you very much to have joined us. Let's begin with you, Sundas. Uh, today was an important day. The uh, basic aim of the day is to show solidarity, A, uh, with the Kashmir cause, B, with the Kashmiri people, C, with those who have lost their lives to highlight this cause <coughs> over the last decades. How important has been Pakistan's support? Let's begin with Pakistan. How important has been Pakistan's support for this cause over the last decades? Well, Pakistan's support, let me begin by saying, is the most important support and it is uh, not just uh, in kind. We have seen Pakistan support diplomatically. We have seen Pakistan support legally. We have seen Pakistan support proactively for the people of Kashmir. And it, it is the only support that we rely on as Kashmiris and we see as an unwavering support. Uh, whether that be uh, in times of war, in times of these 75 years of brutal occupation, the only hope that springs out uh, for us as Kashmiris uh, is the fact that there is one country who is definitely and unequivocally standing by the people of Kashmir. Uh, so, so solidarity as far as actions are concerned, solidarity as far as understanding the humanity behind the support, uh, indifferent of the territorial uh, you know um, greed uh, that we see only from pakistan uh, otherwise uh, as you know our uh, other neighbors of uh, you know our territory as far as india is concerned it is a hostile brutal occupier and we 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 only rely on pakistan to uh, represent to the rest of the world and advocate our plight and uh, resolve this issue uh, for the people of kashmir according to their will you know, it is very interesting and important that uh, the will of the Kashmir people be uh, taken into mind. Because, you know, when you talk of the will of the Kashmir people, it's so easy to, you know, say that. But in fact, in reality, what is, uh, what is the sad part is that that will is never taken into consideration. Almost 76 years have passed and uh, that will ha has not been listened to properly. In fact, all the important decisions in India have been taken against the will of the Kashmiri people. When uh, you say that you are a democratic country, a pluralistic country, then how can you resort to such machinations, not since now, not since a decade, but since so many decades? Uh, no, thank you very much. I mean, uh, this is the fundamental question when it comes to uh, particularly people of Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, there is a historic and consistent pattern of the governments within India particularly. I mean, now we say about BJP, but if you see the Congress and the other governments, there has been a sustained pattern of denying people. When it comes to Kashmir, I guess uh, uh, if you see in past, uh, maybe governmental institutions like the judiciary just which cemented mm -hmm. the, the Supreme article, Court of India. Yes, uh, but particularly their higher courts, uh, they have, uh, they are, you know, sort of uh, cemented that 370 uh, move by BJP. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, there is also a contradiction when we see in their governmental institutions, in their political parties, uh, particularly when it comes to Kashmir you are aspiring to become a security council member, you are aspiring to become a nation with democratic ethos and all that. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to Kashmir, it's totally opposite there. If you see the pattern of the laws over there, those are not democratic at all. Mm -hmm. May it be UAPA, may it be Public Safety Act, may it be others. Uh, over the period of time, if you see, even if you take this August 5th as a reference point, uh, what happened was totally something which was against the will of the people. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see the delimitation commission that they have brought in. What happened with the delimitation commission is that you are increasing, expanding the constituencies of minorities, pitching Muslim versus non-Muslim, I mean, very traditional idea and very traditional lines. Number two, if you see uh, issuance of domicile law, I mean, it's again, if you see, it's just to bring the people from outside the valley and particularly Muslim. Uh, Change the, the whole demography so that the next time, whenever a plebiscite happens, the majority uh, is no longer that of the natives of uh, in illegally occupied uh, Jammu Kashmir. And, and now, if you see the other patterns as well, maybe uh, this is against, I mean, none of these things have been taken into the consideration that it's actually you're talking about the people of Jammu and Kashmir. You're doing reorganizations, you're doing delimitations, you're putting so many laws into that, but you're not taking the will of people into consideration. Mm -hmm. And how would you do that? I mean, for that matter, they couldn't, they were unable to hold the elections, whatever the fake elections, I must say, they were using at that time with their own pro parties. I mean, they, they denied even the parties like PD, PDP and mm -hmm. others, NC, if you see, National Congress, if you see, 
uh, what happened with them over there that uh, they were unable to hold the elections as well. So what is the process and what is the barometer to measure the will of the people? So absolutely it's not there. So this indicates one very important thing that uh, you have lost the people and actually you don't want to confront that will of the people. And second, uh, importantly, if you see uh, when, you, with, when it comes to the will of the people, civil liberties are important. Uh, the journalist community, the media, many suffered a lot of, you know. And continue to suffer. Suffer right now. So uh, if you see, I mean, you can't conflate uh, the freedom of the criticism with the, with the, you know, what they call it, the anti-India sentiment mm -hmm. and all that. This, mm -hmm. is, this is not possible. And this, this, is, this, this shows that internally BJP tried to control, to master, to galvanize their vote bank. But they are further, uh, uh, I guess, they had ventured into a perpetual conflict. That's all the time increasing and right now they have issued sort of mass profiling, asking people of the data and all these things. These all reflect one thing, importantly that people are not with you actually. So mm -hmm. you are trying to enforce something from outside and try to forcefully uh, impose on the people and they are not, they're not accepting it. That's mm -hmm. the major thing. The fact is they have never accepted them from day one and to this day despite the numerous UN resolutions. Dr. Mujahid Gilani, I would like to refer to the United Nations, you know. Uh, the first time when India went running to the UN in 1948 and since then the number of resolutions that are still pending in the UN as far as their implementation is concerned. They have been passed but they have not been implemented. Our caretaker Prime Minister Anwar Kakar Saab today says that not only is this day an important day to pay rich tribute to those sacrifices made by our Kashmiri brothers and sisters but it is also a day to make the United Nations realize of all the resolutions that are still pending as far as their implementations is concerned. Why haven't these resolutions been implemented? Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Uh, first of all, uh, really grateful um, for having me on this very important day. You're absolutely right uh, when you talk about the United Nations resolutions and unfortunately all the resolutions that were passed uh, vis a vis uh, the state of Jammu and Kashmir are unfortunately eating dust in the cupboards and drawers of United Nations. Um, first of all, uh, you need to understand a few things. See, the, the, the problem or the issue or conflict of Jammu and Kashmir was given a solution very early in its period of initiation. However, what we see is there are few factors because of which United Nations could not really implement all those resolutions. And one of the major factors was Indian obstinacy. Pakistan, even at that time, even now in 2024, is quite willing for all the options that are acceptable to the people of Jammu and Kashmir. Once again, the thing that you were talking about is the will of the people mm. is supreme. But as far as India is concerned, uh, you know, uh, you need to understand that India never wanted to let go of Kashmir. Back in 1947-48, when Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru even traveled uh, to Srinagar, address the people of Jammu and Kashmir, address the people of Sirinagar at Lal Chow. He promised them that it's not the land of Jammu and Kashmir that we yearn for. India will keep Jammu and Kashmir only and only if the people of Jammu and Kashmir want to be with the Indian Dominion. But this is one face of India, Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru telling this to the people of mm -hmm. Jammu and Kashmir. But on the other side, we see to the world what India did was actually initially occupy the Jammu and Kashmir territory and annex it. And now at this point in time, this is a settler colonialistic project going on. So I don't see, uh, even in the near future, let's be very honest, that the United Nations resolutions will be implemented vis a vis Indian obstinacy is concerned. The most major and important factor as far as this is concerned <coughs> is the people of Jammu and Kashmir, mm. who no matter what has been happening, are still on the roads, are still against the Indian dominion, against the Indian hegemony. And backing them is Pakistan politically, morally and diplomatically. And not only that, let me be very clear about this. It is the whole of Muslim Ummah, Malaysia, Turkey and several other countries who did play their part after 2019, no matter how minuscule that was, but they did so. All right. So in this, you know, the people are paramount in all of this because it is for the people 
that uh, uh, you know the the right to self determination is being determined that needs to be implemented it is for the people of kashmir so that they can live their lives the way they want to in the place that they call their home in this case it is indian illegally occupied jammu and kashmir i'd like to also refer to the different statements that have come today whether it be by our critical prime minister our president our chief of the army staff who have uh, paid rich tribute to the people of kashmir you know and think it's very important to also uh revere the people of indian illegally occupied jammu and kashmir for their resolve their struggle consistently braving grave human rights violations and inhumane lockdowns in the indian held valley is the struggle of the people of indian illegally occupied jammu and kashmir today in 2024 uh going on with the same spirit with the same zeal with the same passion despite having brave grave human rights violations and inhumane lockdowns well uh as we know that the uh systematic uh government back uh, backed oppression of the people of kashmir has increased many fold since the modi regime has come into power but uh, as far as the resolve of the kashmiri people is concerned um i i i think i won't exaggerate when i say that 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 will not die even for the next 100 years of occupation we have brave through 75 years of occupation mm. the longest standing territorial dispute uh, and uh, the the stakeholders the main stakeholders of this dispute the people of kashmir uh, they understand the value of freedom they understand uh, that this uh, intimidation by the indian government is going to consequently end up with the ultimate extinction of the people of kashmir uh, this is what is uh, what the government in india wants yes. that uh, you know the a genocide that has already begun a complete extinction uh, extinction of uh, the those people who call in illegally occupied jammu and kashmir their home those who are been fighting for the right to self determination yes so the, the, this this uh, sort of behavior by the indian government i think th- they felt uh, as if this uh, idea of naya kashmir would uh, you know lessen the uh, fervor in the people of uh, um, kashmir and make them more uh, sort of inclined towards uh, surviving in this occupational regime Uh, but unfortunately what the the indian government doesn't understand is that censorship intimidation and the ultimate uh, you know genocide of the people of kashmir is the antithesis of uh, any human progress let alone the kashmir valley so um, i i would uh, ov- i always say that they're not victims they're victors because it's it's a hell lot of different to survive in an occupational regime such as the kashmir valley and the jammu uh, region it, it, it we cannot equivocate our uh, you know plight with anyone else except um as uh, rightly uh, being pointed out by uh, dr mujahid gilani with the people of palestine and that's where the importance of pakistan also comes in because palestine has uh, quite a few muslim neighbor uh, neighboring countries but unfortunately we don't see that unequivocal support for the people and uh, the diplomatic there's also and, a lot of similarities you know, in the way yes. that the brutalities are being committed yes. both in palestine and in illegal yes, occupied jammu and as far as pakistan is concerned i i feel like uh, of course we can always do more mm. but um, as far as the people of kashmir are concerned they they have always stood by this fact that we will be pakistan and uh, you know uh, being a part of pakistan is our ultimate goal and no indian design can defeat that inshallah wakas uh, our caretaker minister for information and broadcasting mr sulangi on his message says two very important points and i'd like to quote them he said a that the jammu and kashmir dispute is one of the longest uh, uh, is in fact one of the longest standing issues on the agenda of the united nations security council the second point that he puts is that the ultimate goal of pakistan is to resolve the kashmir issue ultimate goal of pakistan is to resolve the kashmir issue according to the wishes of the kashmiri people and the relevant un resolutions my question comes to uh, is regarding these resolutions why uh, what kind of impediments are there as far as the implementation of these uh, resolutions is concerned which have been passed whose role in your point of view now becomes primordial for the implementation of these resolutions see uh, when we talk about these resolutions essentially we need to see the historical context of it i mean there has been the progress in past Uh, but the problem on the other side as mentioned by dr sab is about 
uh, the behavior i mean it it has to be a collaborative engagement and arrangement by the both the countries pakistan has been willing and pakistan has been standing with these resolutions since long but the problem on the other side is that india has been trying to evade see the fundamental problem is uh, the the people on the ground actually has rebelled uh, and they have openly in many instances in past if you see that particularly people of jammu and kashmir uh, have not openly said even demonstrated in many ways that they are actually living under occupation now the problem on the other side is when it comes to the implementation of these resolu resolutions it requires collaboration it requires willingness mm. it requires of course then the processes uh, and sadly may it be the dialogue between india and pakistan may it be through mediation may it be through third party may it be the intervention of un bodies or agencies india has been unwilling to do that if you seen past even there is no pre presence of UNMO GIP. Forget the rest. They are not even allowing them to, you know, go so, to the Indian health. So then there is a two question. Ma major question is that see, we have all of the nations, particularly these nation states, agreed on the institutions like United Nations mm. and the broad institutions to resolve the dispute, to live in a world which is which is based on the fair values, democratic values. If you deny that, the fundamental problem is we know that UN do don't have that implementing implementation force or the capacity to enforce that particularly. But of course, then you're the part of the broader processes and systems. Mm -hmm. And I guess this is also about the credibility of the system, of the international system, particularly international governance system, international system of human rights, laws, and other legal conventions that we have. That look, if you try to do this, this would further complicate the issues. It's not about only, uh, I mean, if you see, it has many impacts on the region as well, regional development as well. People of Kashmir, of course, at the top, I mean, uh, uh, at, at the top level of this, they are, we are giving the primacy to them. But of course, it's the future of the billions of people living in this region. Two, two nuclear armed countries coming near to war situation in many times in past. I mean, over a dispute, and then now they are confronted with different challenges. May it be socio-economic, may it be for that matter climate for them. Mm -hmm. uh, if you see the Himalayan region, all these things are interconnected and interdependent. Now, the world, if you see the SDG agenda. If you see the other the agendas of the global institutions, they all are talking about the collaborative mechanism to solve these disputes and come together to solve, to, to move ahead. The problem here is when it comes to issue of Jammu and Kashmir, particularly South Asia, this, is, this, this region has been hostage to this particular issue. And the key issue is that Pakistan is trying to, and then the people in the world has been always saying that it has to be negotiated, mm -hmm. and the people should be. India given doesn't even recognize it as a bilateral issue. But I mean, it is it's just an internal issue yes. of but, India. But see. This doesn't solve the problem. Mm. Kashmir essentially is a political, a democratic question. Mm. It has to be dealt not autocratically, but in a democratic spirit. Mm. And if you're uh, doing away with 370, didn't mm. help. If uh, reorganization didn't help. Mm. I mean, see, today, in the areas like Ladakh and Leh, there's a huge protest. And what people are asking, they're asking that we should have a statehood. I mean, they have bifurcated that, made them union territory. And again, they're coming back to that point that we should, we need a statehood. It gives us a clear lesson that, you know, for short political gains, you can do all these things. You can galvanize vote. BJP has a constituency which was quite far right. And now it's very radical policies, of course, that they have internally divided India. The question is that how is it working long term for a future of this region and particularly uh, for India for that matter? So, I, I mean, had you had a confidence on your system and your political uh, ideology, you could have organized, you could have had the elections as well. They couldn't do that. But they don't, they, it's not that they cannot, it's that they do not um, want to do that. And that there's a huge difference between the two. Dr. Gilali, uh, you know, Vakas points towards the spirit of uh, democracy. I like the term. Uh, do you, what will, uh, uh, you know, uh, implement uh, the true spirit of democracy in the Indian held uh, Jammu and Kashmir? Will it be the restoration of Article 370 and 35A, which I don't see happening? But in a, in a factual world, if it does happen, will it create, uh, uh, will it bring that change for the people of the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir? Or is the only solution whether the 370 or 35A are there or not is the uh, plebiscite is the uh, uh, you know giving their rights to self-determination before the whole uh, uh, you know demographic change occurs to such an extent that even if there's a plebiscite that happens there will be no tangible result 
Well, uh, Omar, you see the most important thing once again is the will of the people that is very important. And what we need to understand is that India or Indian oppression has been working very strategically, very mm. systematically. Back in 2014, when we were actually talking about Article 35 and 370 by the petition, because of the petition by the We the Citizens, the kind of NGO that had asked for the abrogation of both these mm. articles. Mm. And then finally in 2019, it was executed. We need to understand what our actual goal was. The people on the ground, were they actually demanding to gain, gain their rights within the Indian constitution or was it the right of a right of self-determination mm. to get a free, impartial and fair plebiscite? So once you know that your goal, your destination is very clear and that is definitely very clear for the people of Jammu and Kashmir who are living on the ground under the oppression before the barrels of the guns of the Indian terrorist forces, we need to understand that whether Article 35A and 370 are restored, whether Jammu and Kashmir is once again given its statehood or not, whether the human rights violations that are being carried out in the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir or the organized war crimes being committed by the Indian terrorist forces are altogether halted and abrupted this is not going to be the solution for mm. the problem. The only solution at this point in time is very clear, very understandable. Take on board the people of Jammu and Kashmir, and I am talking about the real people of Jammu and Kashmir, not the Muftis, not the Abdullahs. The people on the ground who have sacrificed their life for this conflict, for this very cause, and they're the ones who are still standing for mm. it. And once you take them on the boat, ask them about it, perhaps it is going to be the plebiscite, perhaps it is going to be only their choice whether they want to join Pakistan or they want to join India for that matter. But this is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Article 35A, Article 370, living under the Indian dominion, still being oppressed under the Indian constitution, letting our mosques be demolished or letting our homes and houses be demolished, absolutely no. In the words of Dr. Qasim Faktu, if you're living under slavery and you're living without resistance, that's an abnormal life. Mm -hmm. If you're living under slavery, you're resisting, you're laying down your life, yes, that is the normal life. Well, uh, for that to happen, you know, I, I, uh, a lot of changes need to be done, need to be made and starting from the huge powers that be in the world and organizations such as the United Nations. Sundas, you know, he, uh, Dr. Saab pointed towards uh, the human rights violations. I'd like to uh, r remind our audience uh, about the, uh, the brutal killings of human rights activists like Jalil uh, Andrabi, Andrabi, kidnapped by an Indian major, tortured, murdered, body thrown on the, uh, thrown on the banks of Jhelum. The uh, 87 women gang raped in uh, Kunan Pashpura village by the soldiers of Rashtraya rifles. When India is part of so many human rights organizations, when India declares itself to be one way or the other, uh, some kind of a champion of human rights, or even if it does not, the fact is that human rights violations are happening every single day. Uh, or even more than once every single day in the Indian Hill Valley and also within India. Why isn't the world not, uh, you know, taking cognizance? Where is the FATF? Where are the uh, important human rights organizations going to the UN and, you know, uh, protesting against uh, these abuses? Well, uh, I, I, I think even protests uh, are not enough. Uh, but uh, as, as long as you've asked that question, uh, the international organizations, uh, as pointed out by Doc Saab as well, uh, they have lost all credibility when it comes to upholding uh, rightful just, uh, you know, just uh, uh, justice and uh, the right of humanity for everyone, uh, the dignity of life, uh, uh, the sovereignty of the people, and their religious identity is something we see the West uh, being uh, completely, uh, you know, uh, will, uh, completely and willfully ignorant of. Mm, mm. Uh, so um, I think their credibility comes into question when, uh, when it comes to such atrocities which are occurring in the occupied valley, these war crimes that are being committed. Um, unfortunately, what we have seen is that even when uh, organizations such as you mentioned, uh, FATF, when they point out uh, certain 
in discrepancies in the Indian government system uh, as far as terrorist funding is concerned. The, uh, the, the brunt of this comes on again the uh, people of Kashmir and the uh, Muslim minority at large in uh, the uh, Indian Union. So uh, all the laws that they enact are draconian when it comes to the people of Kashmir. Um, as also pointed out by uh, Dr. Uh, the, demog uh, the demographic change that has been happening, it is being supported by uh, the government and it is by f being facilitated by the government. Uh, the, the West doesn't seem to be that, uh, you know, um, uh, concerned with Indian activities within the Kashmir Valley. They, too, uh, they were concerned uh, recently with what happened in uh, the US itself uh, as far as Puno's assassination uh, probe was concerned. But recently we saw them backing out of that also and granting uh, you know, a $4 billion deal to India as far as drones were concerned. So I think as far as uh, these sort of interests is concerned, uh, we know that the West will always hold money first and humanity later. So uh, there is, I feel, no credibility as far as these international institutions of justice are concerned. All right. Speaking of international inst institutions of justice, Dr. Vakas, because there are two doctors. Uh, you pointed to a doctor. So which doctor is she pointing towards? Uh, <laughs> Vakas, uh, uh, you know, there are uh, the laws that are being uh, implemented to change the demography of an illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir are in violations of 18 substantive United Nations resolutions adopted by the Security Council on Kashmir. Do you feel uh, that uh, maybe international courts uh, could be uh, the solution? Maybe uh, the Kashmiris need to take their case to them or make Pakistan a party to it, ICJ, ICC. Can that be a viable option? See, that's an uh, important question. The first stage is that uh, we need to deconstruct this, that's a, that how is it impacting actually the local populace of Kashmir, particularly these changes in demographies. Uh, if you see, uh, the, this is part of the larger process and the program that they have enacted actually, particularly in Kashmir. Mm. So I guess uh, maybe when you talk about the international institutions, if you could remember, I guess Human Rights Council has published two reports on Kashmir, mm. uh, a very uh, open and very, I guess, candid reports on Kashmir, particularly the violations that have been occurred. Uh, I'm not disappointed, to be honest, if you right. ask me. I mean, because the, the see, that's a sad element, uh, what Sundas was also mentioning, that geoeconomics actually are, are the, the, the power of economy, particularly, is taking, you know, lead in today's world, and the human rights are, have taken the back stage. But I don't see this a sustained thing, hmm. because uh, you see the problems across the globe are further complicating, maybe political, the nations are, you know, at daggers drawn and, and there are so many conflicts created because that the system is not answering the fundamental questions like this. Mm. On the other side, when you say about the international organizations or the courts, I mean, the, this has to be seen in the context that in the, some of the international institutions, you have to be, have the willingness of the, both the parties. Particularly when it comes to Kashmir, India, of course, having a lot of burden of human rights violation, and and, and that's that's given and, and issued by the United Nations Organization like Human Rights Council. Of course, is trying to evade that. And but I guess a sustained uh, uh, awareness on that, documentation on that, and the process of conveying to international organizations and non-governmental organizations and the people those are working on human rights, political rights, uh, is important for the Kashmiris. I don't see that these reports are going anywhere. Uh, I mean, uh, these are not for the just for the you know uh, for the uh, consumption, but of course it will go in in, in the memory institution memories of not the right. UN. It will not go right. to the institution memories of the international mm -hmm. organizations. And third important point is, it's of course right now India's position when it comes to economy and and the global politics is prominent. But I see that it's not always the same. One, mm -hmm. second, uh, internationally. The, the case of people of Jammu and Kashmir is just, it's based mm. on the just principle of self-determination and, and of course based on the United Nations Charter. So uh, it's a tough time for people of Jammu and Kashmir, but on the other side what the silver lining is that uh, despite all these things, mm. people's resistance, people's will, people's you know determination is there and people of Pakistan and all the communities may be uh, devoid of any religion I must say. Those are standing with the with the just cause. Like mm -hmm. I mean, if you see the issue of Palestine, there are a lot of similarities, the, and there's yeah, a lot of people, people also standing with the people yes. um, for their just rights, whether they it be Palestine or Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Doctor Mujahid, last question, short answer, but the question is important. Uh, 
uh, we are in 2024, Pakistan has uh, time and again shown and said that uh, it will give up a moral, political and diplomatic support to the people and the just cause. How can Pakistan and other countries help carve a just future for the people of the Held Valley? What And what is the role of important organizations such as the APHC? Well, uh, as far as the role of Pakistan is concerned, uh, the people of Jammu and Kashmir, uh, the whole state of Jammu and Kashmir, Azad Jammu and Kashmir, and the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir do appreciate Pakistan's stand still now for the people of Jammu and Kashmir. We must understand that uh, no matter what, we do have complaints, we do have a lot of uh, things, a lot of negativities uh, in between, but the most important thing is where there is love there are definitely complaints as well and that's what happens with the people of Jammu and Kashmir and the people of Pakistan or in fact the state of Pakistan and as far as uh, the, the NGOs are concerned as far as the other uh, um, stakeholders are concerned who can actually work for Kashmir this is very important you see the people of Jammu and Kashmir illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir are living in an largest open air prison so if they're not able to talk about it if they're not able to speak about it it is the duty of the people outside in the free environment in the free world who can speak about them I will, I will also take uh, a little liberate, uh, liberty over here of uh, mentioning a particular name uh, of a person who has completed 31 years behind bars today, Dr. Qasim Faktu, the husband of Sayyida Asya Andrabi, was first arrested on the 5th of February 1993. See, that person has written almost 19 books even when he was in jail. That person completed his PhD when even, even when he was behind the bars. So today we need to be we need to be very sure about it. The Kashmir discourse is not just numbers, it's not just <coughs> lines and statements. It is the names of the people, it is the names of the families, it is the name of Shahmali Begum, the mother of Makbul Bat Shaheed, it is the name of Dr. Qasim Faktu, who has been behind bars for 31 years. It is the name of Masrat Alam Bart, somebody who has been slapped with PSA repeatedly without any trial, without any conviction. It is the name of Yasin Malik who we fear may be given away to gallows to the deathbed this is important names bring it up bring the story bring the Kashmir mm -hmm. saga to the people to somebody who I believe may be the holder of Beacon yeah, let's, let's hope that happens sooner than later because we have waited far too long for this all of us being Kashmiris and there's a huge diaspora of Kashmiris that and non-Kashmiris who want to see a just resolution to this uh, right to self-determination. Thank you very True. much to all three of you. So in this Malik, uh, Dr. Vakas Hari Kaus and Dr. Mujahid Gilani to have joined us. Kindly stay with us till the end of the show. We'll come uh, very quickly to our second story that concerns uh, the latest incident that has happened in uh, Dera Ismail Khan where 10 cops were martyred, 6 were injured in a late night attack on the Ch uh, Chodma police station in Dera Ismail Khan. Uh, this happened between Monday and uh, be, be, you know, early uh, Monday morning. We've been joined by Brigadier Retired Ahmed Saeed Minhas Sahib, he's a senior analyst. Sir, thank you very much to have joined us. Uh, uh, how important is the timing and the target of uh, this uh, very attack? Okay, it's very unfortunate that yesterday night at about 2.30 a.m., uh, the militants attack uh, again in Deir Khan and the Darabana area where which, which was attacked like about a one month earlier also in which 23 precious lives were lost. Uh, so the timings are, with regard to the timings, yes, very important because uh, the day after tomorrow we are going to have uh, our general uh, assembly uh, uh, elections and uh, our enemies, uh, the hostile intelligence agencies, they want to create a kind of panic situation with the voters being threatened while going to the for the voting. Uh, so it's very alarming at this particular moment. Uh, also, since of the state assembly, we are going to have a lucky carpet in assembly and we are going to have a strong vote to use the grievance to the kind of gap which they have just identified. Perhaps they wanted to fill in that. Uh, also, uh, basically, it's a signal from the, I think, uh, from the Afghan uh, uh, Terran government also, who basically want to gain some time and uh, you know, to uh, have. Relations with the newly elected government of the 8th of February with, a, with an edge you know, with regard to uh, the uh, access to the militancy. Uh, the TTP has accepted the responsibility, uh, but uh, I think so uh, that uh, maybe the locals are also involved in it, uh, which are still to be nominated. But yes, there is a statement from the TTP side. Uh, what, what could be the reasons and uh, why again they killed eight uh, 10? Jawans of the police, there could be many number of reasons, 
So first of all, the interim government of Afghanistan, they are unable to control the TTP at all. They have launched this attack, one. And secondly, at this uh, Darama area, the police station it, it is situated on a road which is leading from Koyta down uh, towards the Gay Khan. Uh, so uh, uh, a month earlier, uh, since the attack was there, there might be the police persons were like a bit uh, complacent and they were not expecting this attack again to be happening in the same general area uh, which was attacked a month earlier. Three, uh, since this is, this police station is a, it's a public place, uh, so whosoever uh, want to get into it uh, can come in. So maybe uh, they were not ready to uh, uh, take on this such kind of attack. And you remember, whenever the attack is there, the attackers have an edge over the defenders. Uh, moreover, uh, the area in which this uh, uh, Daraban or Dhe Khan is uh, located, it was predominantly a stronghold of the TTP uh, prior to the operations in which they were evicted from here. Perhaps they wanted to gain some, some kind of uh, sympathies again before the new elected government, they come into it. Uh, also, I think that since there is a lot of security there in that area, but still how did they manage with all those kind of weapons? There could be one reason that in those areas, the people, they are very allergic to the, uh, the vehicles uh, when the, some ladies are sitting in. So previously we have this experience that uh, uh, the militants have been using the cover of the ladies and might be responsible that they were able to hoodwink. Last but not the least, the kind of weapons they were carrying uh, were state-of-the-art weapons, which the police unfortunately do not have. Uh, so they had a, a little more edge with regard to the weapons also. But having said all this, this is alarming. This is alarming. We need to check it, especially with, uh, with the interim guard of the Afghanistan. I think the way we uh, took out uh, uh, the hideouts of the uh, BLA and BRA people in, inside Iran, we need to strike uh, because the time is there, a lot of lot many chances have been given to the inherent government of the Afghanistan, in which we have been going. They, have, they, were, they had issued the uh, fatwa also, but uh, on ground nothing is happening. And unfortunately, uh, uh, two three weeks back, we had seen that in one of the madrasa, the TTP uh, of the elements and the Tariqat Taliban, Afghanistan leadership were seen together. So this shows that the nexus between the TTA and the TTP is there. Uh, so we need to distinguish as to what kind of priorities TTP or the TTP TTA has and accordingly the newly elected government whosoever comes in we need to uh, talk because our lives are as important as anyone else. So I we totally cannot... agree with you on that Brigadier Ahmed Saeed Minasab and I think that necessarily needs to be done in order for, to, for once and for all you know uh, let those who are backing such terrorists and also uh, those who are financing such terrorists that Pakistan will no longer take any of this anymore in the future. With that ladies and gentlemen we come to an end of today's news and we'll see you inshallah tomorrow with new story segments of to us you in Pakistan. Stay safe Allah Hafiz.